this is the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah, hallelujah. To God be the glory for all the good things he's done in our lives. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Love you. Hey, everybody. I want to sit there and share this Bible study with you about the uh, restored relationship with God the Father in heaven through Jesus Christ. But let's go ahead and pray first. Dear Father, thank you for this opportunity to come together and worship and praise your holy name. Father, you say when two or three are gathered together in your name that you've been in the them. Father, I pray that those who listen to this video take time to, to, to absorb and study and meditate on the words that you've given the day we're one, we're in the midst of you and ask the Holy Spirit to lead us and guide us. Father, continue to teach us and allow the Holy Spirit to lead us and allow us to grow and, 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 and focus on restoring our relationship with you and focus on reconciling others to you as we operate connected with you and that all works that you want done through us shall be accomplished because that will will be done. I thank you, Father, and I pray, Lord, to lead us and work with us to have patience. And we thank you for all that you're doing in my life. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. Hey, everybody. I wanted to do a special uh, video today. Uh, we had a good Sunday service uh, the, on the 9th of August. And uh, this is, is like a uh, what I call discussing a revelation or greater revelation understanding of the Bible for me. And over to some others who also may want to uh, keep on coming from. And, and, and maybe inviting us to start in our witnessing to start looking at God the Father. The title I have is, is all about the strategic goal of God is restoring a relationship with God the Father in heaven through Jesus Christ. I wanted to do that because you know there's different this is this is gives us any of us the uh, clear understanding we're talking about god in heaven who created the heaven and earth god almighty that's above all principalities and everything else he resides in heaven that's where his throne is at and yes i understand for some people well, how do you know that we well, go by the word of god but for believers, this is the focus I'm talking about mostly. And those who are not believers, if you can listen to and see where we're coming from, to get a perspective of our relationship with God the Father in heaven, is understand that that word Father is, is implying a parental relationship that God wants to have with every last one of his children. And that is established through Jesus Christ, our personal Lord and Savior. And so I like the fact that when you say God the Father in heaven, we're clearly identifying where we're focusing at, who we're talking about, amen? So what we're talking today, it was just, we're, we're focusing on social justice and justice, we're focused on the fact that the role of the church has played through history, uh, unfortunately, to, to our detriment, uh, as far as people saying they're teachers or pastors or theologians and so forth, making different types of uh, uh, opinions to to justify some of the atrocities of man. And and you see it, and we're talking about when we were talking today was when you go back as far as the uh, dealing with social injustice and, and we were talking also about racism, we're talking about the fact that, that the church, people who claim to be the church, has written things and documents to justify things such as uh, slavery and racism. Um, and we also seen too, and, and for those that are not <laughs> Christians, we've seen also even science. People, I'm talking about going back, and yes, they didn't know a lot of information back then. And, um, and so they did the best they could, but even science played a role in establishing uh, racism, you know, with the Darwin theory and the evolution and trying to sit there and use the race as a, a structure based on evolution. And, you know, come on, man, you know, 
Some said that he did remove the further move from the tree is a is a different types of uh, superiority that comes with that. Uh, but in the reality, the gospel is saying, the Bible is saying, man is one species. Then we know back, I think in the, in the 1990s or more similar, or maybe in the 2000s, what they're talking about the fact is that we have mapped out the, the geology or the DNA of man. And basically all mankind, all of us are the same. And they said, as, as far as the, the races of other people, we're talking about 99.9. And I heard somebody sit there talk about the fact is that, well, that 1%, that 1% is the difference. That 1%. Is not based on the color of skin, not based on any particular race uh, or ethnic, you know, ethnic group, because of that one percent, all the ethnic groups are in that one percent difference too. That minor one percent, meaning mankind is essentially one. That's why we can reproduce with one another, uh, and we can. We have the same organs, we can transplant and everything else. So I don't know, you want to play that junk, you play it. But the bottom line is that in the past two, 1600s and 1200s and whatever, a man tried to sit there and try to make different species based on the melon and the skin. And I mean, come on, you, it's a joke. And we're going to be addressing that in, in a lot of Bible studies. I've been dealing with some of the uh, writings and books one of them is talking about stamp from the beginning, meaning that our society from the beginning was trying to stamp structures on the races based on the fact of melanin in the skin of a hierarchy, putting people, ranking people at different levels. And, and what I'm saying in the gospel, outside of man and his I call it stupidity. God looks at, looks at us as one. God created us as one. And God is restoring and creating a relationship and reconciling us all back together as one. And it started back in Genesis. And I want to show you in Genesis 1.26, it says, And God said, Let us make man in our image after our likeness. And let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowls of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. And God blessed them. And God said unto them, be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth and subdue it and have dominions over the fish of the sea and over the fowls of the air and over every living thing that moves upon the earth. And when I read this, I like this one piece that some people didn't get. He didn't say for us to have dominion over one another. It's all of us as mankind, male and female, to subdue this earth and have dominion over all the things that moves upon the earth. But when we sit there and, and we talk about racism, we talk about the fact that we want to break that down and try to say one person or one group has more dominion over the other. That's not the plan of God. And, and, and I want to be able to, in this particular reading study and all the studies we'll do in the future, is if you are a child of God, you are accountable to Him, not to other mankind, not to other people that sit there and try to push the junk that contradicts God's way, and God's word. You know a lie, but don't continue to live a lie. We have long, and when I'm going to go through this, one of his books and show how the church and even how science have all tried to twist and interpret things to justify his actions and, and those atrocities that they committed upon one another. But you gotta understand whether that you, if, if we all motivated by money and anything else, you gotta understand in the end, 
You can't take the money with you. In the end, you can't take what you consider perceived power with you. In the end, it's only to be you. And you're not going to take nothing with you. You're going to go and step into another reality and you're going to have to answer. I have to answer. You're going to have to answer for the thing that you did. And remember, the things that man tried to give us is vain glory. And we should strive to be what God wants us to be and conform to the image that he wants us to conform to. And I like the fact is, when I say God the Father, it's that parental relationship that he wants us to have between us and God the Father. I'm going to totally emphasize the Father part because that does change the relationship and perspective. It shows a more nurturing, protective relationship of a parent toward his child. That's what God is talking about. And that's the revelation I was getting out of it. And I'm going to continue using more scriptures that goes with that. But I'm telling you, man, it's, I thought it was just exciting for me. Maybe not for other people, but exciting for me. And I, I do remember that song and the other people had those revelation. And one song to say he's a good, good father. You know, uh, that's a revelation for all of us to start taking on the fact that it's a good father in our life. He's the father, the fatherless. You know, in Genesis 2 7, as we go over how he was created, it says that the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And man became a living soul. There's the body, there's the soul, and there's the spirit. The soul is the consciousness of man. The spirit is the, 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 the actual being of who we are in that revelation, in that realm, spiritual realm of reality. <laughs> the flash is the, where the laws of physics apply. In verse eight it said, in God, planted a garden east of Eden, and there he put the man whom he had formed. And out of the ground made the Lord God to grow every tree that is pleasant to the sight, and good for food, and the tree of life also in the midst of the garden, and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. In verse 16, and the Lord God commanded the man, saying, of every tree in the garden thou may freely eat but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat of it, for the day thou eat of thereof, thou shalt surely die. And you notice one of the biggest things man missed out on is the opportunity of life. God did not restrict man at that time to eat of the tree of life. But in reality, Man chose death in the end because he was warned by God not to eat of that tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And we can go into different subjects as to uh, whether that was going to be permitted somewhere along the time later in life, but it was only in God's time and not man's time. Amen. You know, so so that there was that relationship. You know, even in that Genesis, I could have put down the fact that God says not good for man to be alone. God even came and put man and brought him a woman and, and therefore they became one uh, in chapter 2. But let's go into the fact of this relationship I'm talking about. In Genesis 3, starting in verse 1. And then the serpent was more subtle than all any beast in the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, has God said, you shall not eat of every tree of the garden? And just remember that, because this is the same trick that he used for all of us. He comes in and questions those things that we have been told not to do or should not do. And the woman said unto the serpent, we may eat of the tree, may eat of the fruits of the trees of the garden, but the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of God, God has said, you shall not eat of it, neither shall you touch it, lest you die. And the serpent said unto the woman, ye shall not truly die. And I'm going to tell you something, I'll stop right there. That's where many of us in life run into a problem. 
I use the analogy today in one of my uh, uh, panel where we showed a, a parallel of a parent telling a child as we, as all of us raise our children, all of us that have been raised, we know that we have been, our parents normally put rules and, 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 and boundaries for us to, to operate in for our protection. So, you know, for example, when we use that example, Zay, is uh, you, you tell a child to stay in the yard, don't talk to strangers, and we know that there's predators out there, sexual predators and so forth, who try to do different things to lure a child uh, so they can be kidnapped or something. And, and they'll come up and they're, they're going, the first thing they'll do is, is say, try to introduce themselves and try to get the child to come closer to them. Uh, and then they'll do something such as, you know, either using candy or toys or something of that nature and getting that child to come closer. When that child was told by the parent not to talk to strangers. And, you know, if if in, in most cases, I, and I praise God in situations where a parent looks out but they're looking at the child who may have been taking care of things, they look out and see how the child is doing it. And in some cases you see the child uh, being approached by a stranger and that parent comes running out and they, they say, excuse me, can I help you? In most cases, those type of predators sit there and take off and running and leave. <laughs> but the issue is the child, that parent talks to that child now and says, listen, didn't I tell you not to talk to strangers? And that child, if that child continues to be disobedient, it's damage or, or, or disrupt the relationship between the parent and the child. And that's the situation here where the children, the, the man and the woman was told what not to do and, and, and told them what would happen. And now you talk about it in, in verse three, the guy gonna sit there and say, verse four to say, you shall not surely die. That's a contradiction. And when we contradict, that's what we know it's supposed to do. We constantly that in a relationship, and you're dealing with a spouse, you're dealing with uh, parents, that when we sit there and do something opposite of what they tell us to do, or ask us to do, and we do it anyway, we, we now cause a, a rift in a relationship. And that rift can be restored because most parents will are forgiven, and that's what God is the same way. Uh, to to restore that is to say I'm sorry and, and, and try to see what you do better. And, and that's that's what is the situation going on here. Here the somebody comes from the outside and try to tell uh, the woman as well as the man that you should not feel really die. That's a contradiction to what was told. So verse five, for God does know that in the day that, God, that, that you eat thereof, then your eyes shall be open and you shall be as God's one good and evil. So God told him not to do it. This stranger, this new contact coming into the system is trying to contradict what God says. And that's the same thing that happens in our relationship, in our community, when we sit there knowing the laws, you know, the speed limits, we talk about what you got to do in your job. When somebody's telling you, you've been, even if you're the supervisor, and, but you got other supervisors than you, that, that you need to stay within the boundaries that they put you in there so that they can maintain some type of order. And when we sit there and break those orders, I'm talking about from speeding, running a red light, uh, committed adultery or anything like that, we, we, we break and break mess the relationship up. You see what I'm saying? And that's the same thing here. And in verse six, we say, and when the woman saw that the tree was good for food and that it was pleasant to the eyes, a tree to be desired to make one wise, she took of the fruit thereof and did eat and gave also unto her husband with her and he did eat. And the thing is that sometimes the what one of the things the enemy comes in subtly is to sit there and try to get us off focus 
on what was supposed to be. The focus was supposed to be in that relationship between them and God. And what the enemy came in and was successful in doing is to break that relationship. Because you see in verse 7, and the eyes of them both were open, and they knew they were naked, and they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves aprons, and, and, and they heard the voice of God just like a child or even a parent or even a relationship thing. Husband and wife went after the did so long, and they hear that voice. And here you see they heard the voice of God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And, and Adam and wife did what? Hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God among the trees in the garden. Isn't that what happens when we have a relationship broken? We we try to we we try to avoid the person or whoever that situation is. We try to get away and try to hide what we've done. That means a relationship, because when, when a relationship is in full presence, when somebody comes, you don't hide. You're not gonna hide from your your your, your husband or your or your wife if you if you if you do nothing wrong. It's only when we do something wrong is when we want to move from the presence in a relationship. And that's the break here, the breaking of a relationship. And the Lord God called Adam and said of him, where are thou? And he said, I heard that voice of the God that I was afraid because I was naked and I hid myself. And he said, who told thee that thou was naked? That's another thing. When we, when we, we break that fellowship, you know, we don't want to recognize that, but not the person. God said, who told you was naked? I didn't tell you was naked, but obviously you don't make your mind up that you did that. So he said, Hast thou eaten of the tree thereof? I commanded thee that thou shouldest not eat. And the man said, The woman who thou gavest me, gavest to be with me, she gave me of the tree, and I did eat. And the Lord God said unto the woman, What is this that thou hast done? And the woman said, The serpent beguiled, tricked me, and I did eat. And then one of the bigger things about relationships is to not pass it on, pass the blame on somebody else. Take responsibility. None of those people took responsibility. And now we have a broken relationship. And you see here in verse 22, and the Lord God said, behold, the man has become as one of us, male and female, to know good and evil. And now lest he put forth his hand and take also the tree of life, and eat and live forever. Therefore, the Lord God sent him forth from the garden, from that environment, from that dwelling place, that, that place of protection, to till the ground from whence he was taken. So he drove out the man, and he placed at the east of the garden of Eden cherubims and a flaming sword with turns every way to keep the way of the tree of life. You see that their relationship was broken. The access to eternal life was denied because the relationship was broken. They were moved from the garden. Obviously, everything they needed was in that garden. And then all of a sudden now, they're forced to go out and tour the land and make, uh, survive on their own. And isn't that something, the same thing that happens, and it's not, hopefully, doesn't happen in a negative way, but all of us, as we grow older, move away from our parents and start making a life for ourselves. The um, best way though, is to do that uh, with an agreement and a relationship maintained so that the parent can always assist the children until the day they die. 